Happy New Year! Welcome to this January 2011 edition of Local Image. I'm your host, Judy Sky Voss. Today's show brings a look back at some of the many stories we shared on Local Image in 2010. And with over 60 segments to choose from, we had to narrow it down quite a bit. So we've picked some of our favorites and packaged them into three themes. The first showcases some of the many interesting people we interviewed. The second theme shares stories of honoring and remembering. And the third theme shares some of the great fun we found in our communities over the past 12 months. And here now are some of the interesting people we met in 2010. Well, uh, my first Olympics was 2002 in, in Salt Lake City. Yeah. And so that, that'll that always be my favorite Olympics, just mm -hmm. because it was in the United States, right. and, and um, it was post 9-11, so there was a tremendous amount of nationalistic pride, and right. it was really special. Um, but with that said, Vancouver was a close second. It Excellent. was organized really well. Uh, the people were great. Um, the Canadians were fun. They were a great host. Mm -hmm. And uh, the transportation was great. And... Um, you know, the Americans did really well. Right. So oh, we, we beat our record, um, you yeah. know, so, so we were, as Americans, we were all really happy to, to be a part of that. What was your um, your fondest memory? What is really going to stick with you from that experience? Well, I, my race is number mm -hmm. one. Um, but a close second was I was at the gold medal round okay. for, the, for the hockey game. Awesome. And um, I was at both Canada, Canada versus U.S. games. No. Um, We, I was always an overweight child. I mean, we we were fed very well and we always cleaned our plates and everything. And so that entire chapter of my life, it always seemed kind of fake smile, you know, where you try to kind of put on a brave face and have the personality that everybody would expect, you know, bright and bubbly. And yet on the inside, you know, something's not right. Um, I was 289. And seeing that kind of number, it's, it's almost numbing in a way because you're like, oh, is that possible? And yet, you're so depressed by it that you don't even care. And the best you can do is just hope that you have family that loves you. I was very fortunate because they were always coddling me and you know, making sure I felt okay about myself. But there comes a point when you grow up and you realize you can't be coddled anymore and you have to do things to change your own life. Two years later, you know, 100, almost 20 pounds lost. And now I can look back and I can go, wow, that was quite a lot, you know? But it's doable. Well, I saw an ad for the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota Duke campaign that they wanted stories. I answered the ad, wrote up my story, which I'd never told anybody before, so it was one of those spur-of-the-moment things. Completely forgot about it for a couple months, and then I got a phone call to go audition. And, you know, as you probably figured out, I got the audition and appeared in the commercials. And filming the commercial was amazing, but all this other stuff that's happened afterward, I mean, I have been fortunate enough to be given a sponsorship by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota for the 2010 race season, and I am now going on, even coming up, I have a trip to go up north to speak to some of their employees and things like that. It's just, it's all spiraled into this amazing new life and this new kind of endeavor that I'm on. I'm an investor outside of, of what I do here in teaching. So um, I use data, and then at the point when I realized that there was data on students, which further showed me what they can and cannot do, and I saw the degree of variation between students in a classroom, it was clear to me that as a teacher, one teacher to 20 or 25 students cannot solve the problem uh, with with, with human capacity alone. So that uh, led me to, to looking at technologies uh, that I can incorporate in the classroom, which will allow students to be independent learners connected through the internet to content that is published from Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Japan, New Zealand, name it. Uh, I find those sites, I connect it to my website, and then I guide the students on what I want them to do. From September, when the first test was taken, to January, when we took our second test, the, in the four and a half month or so period of time, 
uh, we had gone from being a somewhat slightly below average third grade class to a mid fourth grade level class in the critical uh, subject uh, disciplines of reading and uh, and mathematics. Now, uh, when I saw the data at that point, I was ready to buy uh, my own cooking. That must be very cool to know that what you've been creating here right here in North St. Paul yeah, has yeah. gone, you know, virtually worldwide. Well, it, it, it really is um, a, a trip, I guess is the right word. <laughs> um, because when I, I've, I've tried many things in video business that were beyond doing the corporate video, the commercials, the live events, um, something that's unique and different uh, that has failed. Right. And they, they haven't all succeeded. And so when, uh, when I got this started, it was like, well, let, let's try this. It's a real tr trip, a real treat to be able to know that I've made something that has sold uh, to over 200,000 people since 99. So your tricks are your treat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and speaking of Halloween, I bet you have the most popular house on the block. We do. We have, we, <laughs> we have pro probably one of the most popular ones in the Twin Cities area. Uh, not too many people from far away come to see it, but what's unique about our house is, it is uh, it's the white sands proving ground of the vi virtual effects, of the projection effects. A local singer, songwriter named Matthew Griswold, and Matthew is a retired U.S. Army veteran who served in Iraq, and now Matthew continues to work on behalf of veterans and their families and is here today to tell us about the upcoming Veterans Aid concert that he is hosting. Matthew, welcome back. Oh, thank you, Judy. It's great to be back. Yeah, you look great. Well, thank you very much. You too. <laughs> um, tell us what's at the heart of this concert, because this is the second annual, right? This is the second okay. annual. Um, what's it all about? Last year, we uh, last year we actually even called it TC for Troops, but uh, it was such a success that we wanted to branch off. And the idea of the concert is uh, there are a very large number of veterans that are returning home and suffering from a lot of issues that uh, that they maybe wouldn't have suffered from otherwise. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it be, can be an unfair disadvantage. And uh, there's a local organization that we teamed up with this year called uh, Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans. Okay. And they deal specifically with veterans that are in crisis situations, um, maybe suffering from depression or uh, you know, have the side effects to uh, things like post-traumatic stress right. disorder. And so the idea is that uh, we're going to use music for one night and we're going to, uh, to help raise money and also awareness because uh, there's still a lot of people that, that, aren't, that aren't as educated right. as maybe they should be on, on certain issues that, that our own veterans are, are dealing with. And so that's kind of the idea of the night and that's the idea of the cause. So. It's a great effort. And I know well, when I was uh, playing and managing, they had done a number of stories on, <clears throat> on me because I had so many different superstitions. And uh, Oprah Winfrey's got a clipping service throughout the country. And one year they were doing a show about superstitions. And they called me up and asked me to go on the show. And there were five people on the show that day. And I was sitting in the green <clears throat> uh, room with the basketball woman. We were watching the other three go out there, and they were discussing their superstitions, which really were... OCD uh, tendencies and and I looked at the basketball coach I said that's us and she's no I'm not like that I said you wouldn't be here if it wasn't first of all I was amazed and uh, and and very proud of Louis for the for the reality that he was willing to share that most right. people wouldn't do that and I have had like he has had so much I just got a call this morning from a friend of mine in Chicago that I'd sent the book to and he called me and told me he loved the book and but the first thing he talked about is he says I love that chapter on on obsessive compulsive personality Absolutely. because people don't read about that in mm -hmm. books it's not something that a lot of people share and so I think it was a wonderful thing that he put it in there and I think it will help a lot of people who, agree. who read it. It's really a unique situation for not only the players but I think for the whole community the whole state there just aren't tournaments like this anywhere right. in the world and to watch the kids come and and anytime you get in a one game situation, anything can happen. Look at that's why we won the nineteen eighty Olympics. Yeah. We played them 
the Russians another 99 times. Yeah. Most of us in hockey would, would bet that they would lose all 99 games. Right. And, and when these kids go to a state tournament, you never know who's going to win. And they come from all different parts of the state. They, This is the highlight of their career. And in many, many cases, will be the highlight of their life. I, I, I just get to do more. it, you know, a few days a year. But that few yeah. days really has been uh, just, uh, to me, a tremendous amount of enjoyment. And... And I can't tell you how many memories I get because of it. Why did you feel the need? Why, why did you want to put this out? And what because is this about? Because people, Judy, are so afraid of moving, of getting away from that nest. And if they'd only do it before illness really set in, while they're a couple, and go there. Forget the lawn, forget the snow, just have fun. <laughs> and what are some of the key points that you get at in this book for people to really, you know, that really makes them think, yes, this might be the right decision There's for always us. something for you to do. You do not sit in an apartment. There's things for you to do if you for can't drive any longer. You can take the van, it takes you to the mall, it takes you wherever you right. want to go and picks you up. They have nursing services, they have food. We have wee bowling, which I'm very good at. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt. There's always something for you to do. And if you don't want to be so involved, that's another thing That's to okay to. too, then you can sit and write books. Yeah, exactly right. first story that I did where uh, I just didn't go out and gather facts and, and string them all together. I was, uh, all rookie reporters cover blood drives. And I was working at a station in Charleston, South Carolina, where uh, the president of the, uh, the Red Cross Blood Bank was also the general manager. And so we covered every blood drive, no matter where it was, wherever okay. the blood mobile went, we covered it. And you have to remember, I, I, I was just a dummy. I, I didn't know anything about anything. Yeah. And so I was sitting there talking to a nurse and I said, uh, are there, I mean, is blood different from other blood? <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And they went through the list of blood. And I said, is there any kind of like rare blood? And they said, yes, oh, there's an RH negative that is very, very rare and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's sorely needed and we very seldom ever see it. And she said, but, but matter of fact, the guy just walked in he has RH negative blood. The only source I had at that time was at the Medical University of South Carolina, a guy named Joel Sexton, Dr. Joel Sexton. And I called him and said, is there anybody who needs RH negative blood at uh, the hospital? And they said, yeah, there's a little girl, you know, and we've looked all over the country for our RH negative. We can't get it in here for three days. And I said, well, there's a guy sitting right here. Wow. So we put him in the news cruiser and we drove him down to the hospital and they did the transfusion right there and the little girl survived. And uh, suddenly I realized, you know, there really aren't any dumb questions. Producer, photographer, editor extraordinaire Scott Jensen is one of the on-location staff that makes local image possible, and he joins me right now to share some of his favorite moments from the past year. Hey, Scott. Hey, how you doing, Judy? <laughs> hey, nice, nice to, to have you, you in front of the camera yeah, for a change. Yeah, I know. It's been it's kind of weird. I'm, yeah. I'm like, how's the shot looking? I'm trying to <laughs> get it all figured out. But You're I'll itching relax. to get back behind the camera, but before we let you do that, um, share with us a little bit of some of your fond memories from working on the show this past year the the new intro i'm excited about you did a great job with the that. uh there's been a lot of positive response from our our viewers absolutely and the people who are working with us just can't get enough of us so yeah. that's a good thing yep and mm -hmm. uh it's just been a lot of fun yeah, yeah some... well what was one of your favorite stories to work on because i know there were several that you did that i really like but what was your favorite my favorite story that's a tough one because there's so many good ones <laughs> no probably the tribute to the troops home visit. I was we hoping call it. you were going to say that. Yeah, no, one of my favorite it's too. a good one, and uh, it, it was a great opportunity to just go and and have my camera ready just to see what would happen because that's right. 
You just don't know. You have no, yeah, situation. you have no idea when, when like 120 people show up at someone's doorstep, which is what happened on this story, and to honor the a fallen soldier, right. um, you just, it's kind of a photographer's dream to just see the reactions of the people, you know, that are, and and that's exactly what happened. I held the camera right on the the mother of the yeah. fallen soldier, and she was just it, it really overtaken with emotion. It really makes that piece. That story is great. It's one of my favorites. So. Why don't we take another look at that story and a couple others that basically honor and remember folks that we've lost this past year. Let's do that right now. I'm doing really good. Right, I'm good. so glad you came. That thank was you. very nice thanks, of you thanks, to come. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Tad would appreciate it. Oh yes, I'm just trying to honor my uncle, I guess. It's just nice how people are here to celebrate Tad's life. He was always found with the military fishing in Alaska. I think he'd be very, very happy with all the people that are here, but he'd wonder if this was for him. He'd wonder why it was for him, because he didn't feel like he was a special person. He was. He was. We think he was. He was a very special boy. There's still people over there fighting and risking their lives and their sons and daughters and husbands and wives that are losing their lives and that we're all having to go on without them. Here they are. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get a picture. Okay. Oh, there's Hello, hello. I am. I am. Hi, neighbor. Hello. <laughs> I've walked by your house a thousand times with my daughter on the way to the park. I know. I, I waved at Tad and I visited with you. And we're here for one reason today to tell you that while we can't put ourselves in your shoes and know exactly how you feel, but we completely and absolutely want you to know that there's a contingent of people in this world that respect your son, is proud of his sacrifice to our nation. We consider him a hero beyond all heroes, and we want you to know he is not forgotten and that we love you very, very much. Oh, thank you so much. We have some things we'd like to present to you. Thank you. Oh. He's a handsome man, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Won't you fly home, my sweet angel? Major Tad Hervis, 48, of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Tad was a hero beyond all heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Barb and the Hervis family. Won't you fly awesome that somebody will remember Tad and all the other people that have not lived yet. It's very awesome. When the luminary 
memories are lit here and the remembrance of the people that uh, have died, it's just merely what I would call reverence. I just have this deep feeling of love um, for those that I'm surrounded by, but also those that I remember. Um, I just feel love for them. Kind of like a camaraderie of people. Either they are a survivor battling cancer, or just someone that knows someone else, and I think it's important for us to remember that we're here to love each other. It is with the great sadness that we extend our condolences to the family, friends, and co-workers of Maplewood Sergeant Joseph Bergeron. Joe's violent death reminds us of the dangers our men and women in local law enforcement face every day. And we are grateful for the work they do to help keep us safe, and we will continue to keep them in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. Thank you, Sergeant Bergeron, for your professionalism and dedication. Thank you, Joe, for your compassion, friendship, and love. Watch over all of your families and continue to guide and protect us the way you always have. When we're taping stories for the Local Image Show, I can often be heard saying, if we're not having fun, then we're doing something wrong. Well, we must be doing something right because we sure had fun capturing some of these exciting events in 2010. Take a look. It's a nice lady. Oh, I like this Nice story. lady. My problem is I like them all. <laughs> Well, it's not the average day at Donatelli's because we have the fourth graders from Willow Lane Elementary, which is a local elementary about a mile from here, coming in and running the place. learning alive. It's tied with the standards. Um, I'm greeting people and I'm going around and I'm seating them. I'm serving, taking orders, bringing stuff to the customers. Order! All right. Then the kids actually put together little applications and we did interviews with them. Resumes, cover letters. <laughs> What's the best part about tonight? A lot of food. Yeah, good, nice car, a lot of food, nice weather. Gigi's Gigi's beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> like hey. nice we are selling, selling for our baseball team. Making the cash. <laughs> it's just great fun. You meet great people and uh, things that you normally wouldn't do. Uh, I'm a private person, but once I get in this car, I'm... <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> well, I don't want to hear about all the things you might be doing in this car, Rob. Uh, well, once the script is selected, uh, I spend a lot of time with the script trying to decide, number one, who are these characters? What are they doing? You know, just the simple story. Uh, number two, what's the theme behind it all? What are we trying to say to our audience? That you can be sure. Especially with musicals, I like to download all the music, you know, and I'll put it on the iPod or I'll put it on CD, and I'll have it available to me as often as I can have it. Oh, yeah. 
Fräulein Schneider's songs. All of Fräulein Schneider's songs are just, they're, they're incredible. In a musical, when the emotion becomes too great for regular words, just spoken words, that's what you sing. I'm happy to say that there's more of that coming your way as we venture into the new year. We had a fantastic 2010, topped off by a Midwest Regional Emmy nomination for the Local Image Show. Now we hope you join us each month in the year ahead for more Local Image stories focused on the people, places, and events found right here in our Northeast communities. And until next month, I'm Judy Skyboss, and as always, I thank you for watching Local Image. Seeing the osprey at Polar Lark, take two. And so he wanted to learn more about this raptor, the club, okay, competitive, okay. Ready? And also, Jen Scott Jensen came along, and he brings you some highlights from the event. <laughs> Give me some skin. Right. Woo! Hello, and thanks for tuning in this September edition of Local Image. I'm Judy Sky Voss, and we're here Kipper Morin. Ah. ah, okay. When I do see it. Okay, now you're in. Back out, back out, out. Okay. Their website. Oh, sorry. Okay, ready? Frick! Woo. Mosquito. Maybe over, but for those who participated in the memories. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> Flower. Our flower. position is key. It really is. It's a key thing. Yeah, if we're going to win awards, we got to do this right. we got to get this right from the start. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I was glad about that program. Sure. Zoom in on the bags. Thanks. Using footage shot by Steven and other KSTP photos. How do they do that? It's a mystery to me. I don't know. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Indoor racing pool that is the lar third largest in the state. Okay, ready? I'm afraid of these kids. They scare me. Hey, just visit their city's website. I'm going to start over. Their society. So great job on a well job done. <laughs> Do to help us keep safe. But 50 and oh, wait. we're grateful to the work. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's try that again. Please join me again next month for an all-new show. Until then, I'm screwing it up. <laughs> <laughs>